Hello everybody, welcome to part 3 of my Vansom tutorial series. Today we are going to be going over pushing back and taxiing to your departure runway. In our last part we went over IFR clearances, we're going to be going a little bit more into those today. But yeah, it's going to be a very easy, simple tutorial. It's not as it's not going to be as complex as the last couple parts. So when you get your IFR clearance, there's either going to be something or nothing. But if there is something, it's either going to be contact ground for push or contact ground for taxi. If it's contact ground for taxi, you do not need to worry about this step, so we're going to you're going to ignore all of this. I'll leave a timestamp for the next part that you're going to want to know. If it says contact ground for push and start, then you're going to be contacting your ground controller for push and start. If it says if they say nothing, you're going to be contacting the delivery controller. When you're uh, requesting push and start, it's going to be like this. You're going to say ground or delivery, like Southwest 814 at gate, I don't know, Golf 7, request push and start. Though most likely, pretty much all the time, you'll get call sign, ground or delivery, push and start approved. And there's might or may not be a like face a certain direction. So they may say face west, face north, face east, which means that the front of your plane is going to be facing that direction. They could also say tail east or tail north, which means you're going to be facing the opposite and your tail is going to be pointed towards the north or the whatever direction. If they don't say it, usually it's kind of obvious which way you're going to want to po be pointing depending on whatever departure runway you get from the ATIS. But that's a push and start clearance. You will get that, you will push back, and you will stop. <laughs> and then you will request taxi. Now taxi, you're gonna want a notebook out because it's you can either get a really short taxi clearance or a really long taxi clearance, but it's always nice to have a notebook and a pen or pencil out to kind of just like write down everything so you can remember it. So when you request a taxi clearance, you're gonna say ground, call sign, ready for taxi. Let's say we're at Chicago O'Hare and we are here and we need to get to runway 28 center. Now, a taxi clearance that we would most likely get is Alpha, Uniform, Bravo, all the way to, let's say, Lima Lima, Echo Echo, then Papa, and then Golf Golf. This is a really long taxi clearance. Usually, you'll be getting some shorter ones, but this is a medium to long taxi clearance, but most likely, it's going to just be a couple taxiways. This is a little bit dramatic. But, this is a possibility. Now, of course, at Echo Echo, we're going to be crossing to wait right, so they would also add on, cross to wait right at Echo Echo. Now, there's also hold short instructions, meaning that when you get to, let's say, to wait right at Echo Echo, you stop before the runway, maybe there's traffic landing there, and then you can, and ground will usually notice when you do that, when you hold short, and they'll clearly cross. If they don't, wait a minute, and then you can be like, hey, ground, uh, whatever, call sign, holding short, to wait right at Echo Echo. And usually they'll, they, they might say, keep on holding, or you are cleared to cross. You can also hold short at taxiways. You can hold, like, we could say, um, hold short at November, and then you'd stop on Lima Lima before you get on to November. Maybe there's traffic there, and you'd do the same thing as you would for a runway. So taxiing is one of the more difficult parts of like VATSIM because a lot of the times if you're flying in like Microsoft Flight Simulator, the actual like taxiway lights, the taxiway signs, they're wrong a lot of the times at some of these airports. Not like especially like the bigger airports, they don't tend to be, but at smaller airports they do tend to be wrong. Which is why you need need to have charts. If you're flying in America, you don't need to get the uh, Navigraph you can go go onto flightaware.com and get them from there. If you're planning on flying in Europe or anything, it's harder to find decent charts because their aviation administrations don't upload them to the internet like the FAA does. So in that case, you will probably most likely need Navigraph or some sort of payware scenery so you actually know what taxiway you're on. Navigraph is just better for a lot of these things because it's it integrated. It's uh, not sponsored, by the way. Navigraph is just a really, like, it's an essential for VATSIM. $10 a month, if you can't afford it, that's fine, you just gotta stick to USA flying mostly. 
unless you can find another source for these charts. So when you get to 28 Center, let's say you get to 28 Center at Golf Golf, they will hand you off to the tower controller, and you will report to the tower controller that you are holding short of 28 Center. The, and also, whenever you're contacting a controller, they, uh, the controller that's handing you off will either say contact or monitor. Contact means that you're going when you go onto the frequency, you're going to tell the controller where you are and your call sign. If they say monitor, that means don't talk to them, wait, because they, they know that you're there and they'll talk to you when they need to talk to you. So, when you get to runway, you'll talk to the tower controller, tell them that you're holding short. They can either say call sign, keep on holding, and you'll just say roger, you'll just keep on holding there, and eventually they'll clear you. They can also say line up and wait, which means you're going to line up on the runway. You're going to go onto the runway and you're going to stop on the runway facing the direction they're going to take off obviously you don't want to be facing sideways or crooked straight down the runway you're just going to stop and eventually they will clear you for departure easy as that then there is cleared for takeoff a usual takeoff clearance sounds like this call sign winds they'll tell you the winds so like wind 080 at 20 knots i guess um runway 28 center cleared for takeoff and you do not need to read back the winds or anything else. You'll just say clear for takeoff to wait center call sign. Um, that's it for today's tutorial. I'm going to be releasing three more. It's going to be departure and cruise, and then approach and landing, and then I'll be doing a final part, which will be a Q&A where I answer whatever questions I haven't answered. Part five, part five. You're going to want to leave those questions there, make it easier for me to just kind of go through them and add them into the list that I'll answer in part six. Anyway, see you.